SDA Prophetic Ministries presents The Image and the Mighty Stone of Daniel 2. The ancient prophecy found in the book of Daniel chapter 2 is one that we are very familiar with as Seventh-day Adventists. However, there is an aspect of this prophecy that is often overlooked yet very important. In fact, it is so crucial that understanding its meaning creates a new perspective on the entire prophecy. What you are about to learn will challenge your objectivity. Join us now as we revisit the ancient prophecy of Daniel chapter 2. Our study today is based on the vision of King Nebuchadnezzar found in the book of Daniel chapter 2. Before we delve into this study, however, Listen to this statement taken from Counsels to Writers and Editors, pages 35 and 37. There is no excuse for anyone in taking the position that there is no more truth to be revealed and that all of our expositions of Scripture are without an error. The fact that certain doctrines have been held as truth for many years by our people is not a proof that our ideas are infallible. Age will not make error into truth, and truth can afford to be fair. No true doctrine will lose anything by close investigation. We have many lessons to learn, and many, many to unlearn. God and heaven alone are infallible. Those who think that they will never have to give up a cherished view, never have occasion to change an opinion, will be disappointed. As long as we hold to our own ideas and opinions with determined persistency, we cannot have the unity for which Christ prayed. God is here asking us to keep an open mind as we study His Word and to let the Holy Spirit work in our hearts that we might be prepared to receive truth that He may have for us today. Inspiration says here that we have many, many lessons to unlearn. In other words, they are teachings and opinions we will have to change as God's Word becomes clearer. Of course, we know that certain fundamental doctrines are unchangeable. Teachings such as the Sabbath, the investigative judgment, the state of the dead, and the spirit of prophecy. These truths are grounded in the Word of God and form the very foundation of Adventism. They are the pillars of our faith. However, there are other teachings that are not fundamental but traditional. That is, teachings that are passed on or inherited down through time. Without realizing it, some of these doctrines cannot be fully substantiated by the Scriptures. But as time progresses, as God in His mercy and in His love reveals more truth, and we gain a better understanding of His Word, we are challenged to unlearn these teachings. That is what the servant of the Lord is telling us here in this statement. That is, we must be prepared to learn, but most importantly, to unlearn. Are you prepared to unlearn? Well, our study today may just challenge your objectivity. However, as you will see, it will all be substantiated by the Bible and the writings of the Spirit of Prophecy. I invite you now to take your Bibles and please turn to Daniel chapter 2 as we explore this amazing prophecy. You will recall that in Daniel chapter 2 that King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the great kingdom of Babylon, had a dream and could not remember the dream. So he called his soothsayers, his magicians, his astrologers, and all his wise men, but not even they could tell him what he dreamt. The king became furious and threatened to kill all the wise men in his kingdom. Daniel and his companions prayed to God for help, and God heard their prayers. Daniel was given the dream 
and the interpretation. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to King Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these. Daniel here tells the king that the dream is a prediction of what is to take place in the end of time. So in reality, this vision was primarily for God's people living in these last days. This fact is made clear in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. There it tells us that the entire book of Daniel was prophetic. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Who can deny that we are living in the end of time? Daniel here predicts that in the last days we will witness a dramatic increase in knowledge. In our generation, the technological advances in the computer industry has brought about changes in our world that is mind-boggling. Also, when we consider how quickly we can travel from one part of the world to another, there should not be any doubt we are indeed running to and fro and fulfilling prophecy. Clearly, the mysteries of the book of Daniel is to be revealed and fulfilled in our time. Add to this the global disasters Jesus foretold would afflict the world just before he returns. Earthquakes, famine, and wars all testify to the fact that we are living in the last days and the prophecies outlined in the book of Daniel will soon be fulfilled. We turn our attention now to the actual vision of the king. What did the king see? Thou, O king, sawest, and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. King Nebuchadnezzar was told that he saw a great image with a head of gold, the arms and the chest of silver, the waist and the thighs of brass, the legs made of iron, and the feet part of iron and part clay. It is common knowledge that the image made of its various component metals represent the great civilizations of history. In verses 37 through 39, Daniel explained the interpretation of the vision to the king. He told him that his kingdom of Babylon was symbolized by the head of gold. He was told that a second kingdom would take the seat of world dominance. That kingdom, of course, was Medo-Persia, symbolized by the silver. The brass was a symbol of Grisha. The iron was a fitting symbol of the rulership of Rome, whose rule was like iron, which broke in pieces and bruised the world. The feet, made part of iron and part clay, represent our present world. That is to say that the ten toes symbolize the multiplicity of nations that exist today, with some nations strong like iron, some weak like clay, and the two will never form a permanent union. This fact is confirmed by a statement found in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 361. We need not and cannot expect a union among the nations of the earth. Our position in the image of Nebuchadnezzar is represented by the toes in a divided state and of a crumbling material. 
that will not hold together. Prophecy shows us that the great day of God is right upon us. It hasteth greatly. Clear it is, friends. We are living in the time of the Tentos. This prophecy is applicable at this very time. Now we come to the climax of this extraordinary vision. The Bible in verse 34 and verse 35 went on to describe a stone cut out without hands, which smote and destroyed the image. What is the meaning of the stone? To really understand what the stone represents, we need to first of all understand where the stone came from. So we ask the question now, where did the stone come from? The very fact that the Bible says that the stone was cut out without hands would indicate that the stone came from something. It came from somewhere. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof, sure. Where did the stone come from? The Bible says that the stone was cut out of the mountain. The stone did not come from the sky. It was cut out of the mountain. We want to make very clear what the Bible says. It did not say that the stone came from heaven, but it came from the mountain. Do understand that if the image is symbolic of the nations, the stone obviously is symbolic as well. Then the place from where the stone originates must also be symbolic. In other words, if the image is symbolic, the stone is symbolic, then the mountain must also be symbolic. It has a meaning. So what does this mountain in Daniel chapter 2 represent? Zechariah chapter 8 verse 3 gives the answer. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. The Bible is telling us here, through the prophet Zechariah, that a mountain symbolizes people. In other words, God is here likening Zion and Jerusalem, His people, to a holy mountain. The prophet Daniel, in chapter 9, verses 16 and 20, says the same thing. O Lord, according to all Thy righteousness, I beseech Thee, that Thine anger and Thy fury be turned away from Thy city Jerusalem, Thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Notice clearly Daniel in his prayer in behalf of God's people likens them to a holy mountain. He could not be here praying for a literal mountain, because a literal mountain cannot sin. Literal objects do not sin. Only human beings can sin. Thus, by calling God's people thy holy mountain, he is saying, in effect, that God's church is symbolized by a mountain. Perhaps you are wondering why we are stressing this point so much. It is because it is critical that we understand this lesson that God is trying to get across to us today. It is the key to understanding this prophecy of Daniel chapter 2.